Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we do watercolor tutorials. We do a new one every single week. Sometimes we do extra, sometimes... I was about to say sometimes we skip and I'm like, sometimes no, we, we don't never. Do extra. <laughs> we never skip. It's true, but we at least do one a week. We do. We do. And extra because we always have our Let's Make Art Matter every month. Yes. So really, sometimes that's we five. do extra, extra yeah. with lives. And bonuses. Yes. We give a lot. We do. <laughs> So we are going to use three colors for this project. What's the project? Metallic florals. <gasps> ah! <laughs> did I forget to uh, Almost. say that? Yes, I did. Well, thanks, Kenan. You're welcome. Okay. So metallic florals. There's three colors. They're metallics. Colors. <laughs> you get these sets in your subscription box. Or if you buy the individual kits, you'll just get these little squares by themselves. Cake, cake pans, I think is what they're called. I call them cake. Now it does take a second to work the water into the color to get that pigment starting to pick up. So I just like to wet my brush, drop in some water drops on whatever colors I'm using, and then I just kind of work my brush into it. It just takes a second. Don't be too uh, aggressive because you don't want to hurt the bristles on your brush. Okay, the first color is gold. The second color is pink. And the third color is green. Um, we are using two paintbrushes, around six and around two. Uh, we are going to do this project in four steps. So the very first step, we're going to put in our big, um, and if you do any of the florals with us, it's the same steps every single time because I approach f loose floral bouquets the same way every time. I put the big elements in, that's step one. Put the medium elements in, that's step two. Put the small elements in, that's step three. And then any detail lines I got to do. So those are the steps. We're going to do our oath and then do our warm up. So raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. <coughs> if you just did no smile. Or, I promise to have fun. Well, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It's not right. It just looks funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a couple things we're going to go over today is um, I talked about this with other black watercolor tutorials that we've done in this box, but just in case you haven't watched those tutorials, I'm gonna to touch on it again, which is this is not a super heavyweight paper. It's not 100% cotton, so it will bend and warp if there's too much water on it. And so I just want to kind of show you what that looks like if you put too much water. So if my paintbrush, I dip it in the water and I grab color and I don't hit it off the side of the cup or use my paper towel, and start to paint. And then let's say I do another layer on top of that of water and another layer on top of that of water and I'm not drying it and I'm just like putting water, water, water. Already this paper is starting to curl where that water was, okay? So to avoid that, you just need to be very aware of how much water you're actually picking up. So what you can do is you get your paintbrush wet. You can either hit your paintbrush off the side of your cup and then pick up paint and paint with that. Or you can pick up water, hit it on your paper towel a couple of times, pick up some paint and paint with that. Or you can pick up water, pick up paint, hit that on your paper towel a couple of times and then paint with that. Okay, so you guys probably won't be able to see this fairly well, but if I'm just feeling the back of my paper, there's um, warping underneath this first part where I put a lot of water down, and there's no warping on the second part where I had very little water. Um, but I would like to say that water ratio and paint ratio is really difficult um, to master. It, it just takes some practice. And if you want to do a really heavy water, uh, 
project on black watercolor paper, then I would suggest using um, Legion, which is we sell on our website. That paper is nice and thick, very cottony. It can stand up to the water a little bit more. But I think it's useful to show you guys how to utilize paper, even if it's not um, the kind of paper that's best for water heavy paintings. Does that make sense? Yeah, not the super high quality. Yeah, I, I like being able to um, adjust when there are problems instead of feeling like not knowing how to adjust and then just getting super frustrated. So that's why like my materials, I like to switch it up and I like to learn how to work with different materials and then just adjust depending on the materials I'm working with instead of being like, I'm the worst painter or I'm not meant for this or this suck, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's helpful um, to show you guys the tricks that I use. Um, so as I'm painting, if I'm painting with a new paper especially, and I notice that it starts to warp when I'm using water, I just make a mental note. Okay, I just have to be really careful about my water um, usage. And I mention, Adapt. I, I adapt. Yes. I'm like... Adapt and overcome. <laughs> yes. We've trained for years. <laughs> yes. Let's make art brings the best painters. <laughs> We're going to have a Keenan line of shirts that's like adapt and overcome and it's all serious. It's like that stamp. But the stamp is a, a paintbrush. Yes. A, a pretty flower. <laughs> okay. Now, the next thing that we are going to talk about is floral shapes. In the pink... Why are you laughing? I just thought of the Office episode where Michael Scott quotes... Uh, Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky. <laughs> puts yes. it around Wayne Gretzky's quote, Michael Scott. That'd be all my quotes. <laughs> Someone else's name with Keenan after it. And then Sarah Cray after it too. <laughs> <laughs> what was that quote? It's like, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky, Michael, Michael Scott. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so in the, I think the project was called pink florals project. I really went over different flower shapes and really broke that down with a pencil. I'm going to do that um, again, but kind of more quickly. So if you want something more in depth, maybe look back on that YouTube and watch the warm ups if you just need a little bit extra information on how to do floral shapes. Um, so when we're breaking down floral shapes, we look at a few things. We look at the basic shape that they're making, and we also look at the perspective of uh, the way we see them. For example, are they totally flat facing up? Are they kind of curving away from us? Um, so those are all the things you want to keep in mind when you're creating your florals. So like this one right here, this one is totally flat and looking up at us. So I can just do an open flower looking up at us and it's like, ba-bam, there's my flower shape. Okay, now this guy right here and this one a little bit um, are kind of turning, they're on their side. And um, so then you just have to, this one is kind of more of a round shape. Um, so then when you're doing your marks, you're just gonna kind of, so I'm gonna have it facing to the left going down and I'm just gonna do some round, so it still keeps a pretty round shape, like so, and then the petals just kind of come around it. So like pretend you're working around a circle and then put in a couple extra petals. So if we were to lighten that circle like this, if you were to start with the circle and do this base petal first, and it's all kind of coming out from this one point right here, all these petals. And then there's some peeking out here. And then there's some that come around. And then here's the center with little things sticking out. Um, <clears throat> so there's that one. The other one, like the rose shaped one, um, you think of roses like a swirl. They're super concentrated and tight in the center. And as they bloom, the petals on the edge get um, start to pull away from that original um, really tight, um, what's the word I'm looking for, bud. So if this is our rose where it starts with a really tight center and then swirls out, we wanna like mimic this shape, but we just wanna do it with um, 
uh, we don't want it to be a continuous line to make it more realistic. Staggered. So they're going to be staggered lines. So we're going to start with our center and then it, they're like tight in there and they start to stagger and overlap. And then as we get more to the edges, they get longer and maybe a little bit looser, as in not as tight close together. Like so. And you can do that even like these are just um, curved lines that I'm doing. Um, if you wanted to do like more realistic rows, you would start with the center and instead of the, the lines would kind of connect. So you see how I left space in between these ones? Here, if I just kind of keep And that's a little bit more realistic, you see? Yes. So I'm going to do this here. But it's that same idea, which is um, the petals start tight and small. They're staggered. And then as they work their way out, they get bigger and a little bit looser. And to the point where you can even be like, there's a petal. And there's a stem. Oh, look at that. I drew a rose. <laughs> Done. If it was red, I'd say it was... I just lost my chance. <laughs> That's okay. Happens to me all the time. Red rose. Red. Sparkly if that was rose. if that was red, I would say that that is a red rose. Red <laughs> metallic rose. Okay. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is it kind of goes along with that first thing about water usage. And here, um, maybe can they see like using the side cam? Can they see how warped it is right here? Yes, it's got a little discoloration on both cameras, actually. Okay, so this is where I went really water heavy. You can kind of see the paper distortion on that. Yeah. So along with that, I want to show you guys that we are going to try to do these florals with as little brush strokes as possible. So that just means I want you to be very mindful of the strokes that you're putting down on your paper. Also, in that same thought, is you don't always have to color in all the leaves all the time for watercolor. You can see that down here, I kind of just outlined it. So, and part of that was a stylistic choice, and then the other part of that was, I know that I'm working with paper that does not hold water, a lot of water very well. So how can I adjust my painting to where my paper does not get all messed up? Okay, well, I'll, I'll use, um, thoughtful brush strokes and outlines. And then people still can tell that they're leaves and my paper doesn't get all funky, okay? So for your leaves, I'll just show you really quick before I outline it. You can just outline the shape here, the stem. And that is gonna hold up so much better to this paper than if you were to paint and fill in the leaves, especially if you started, because usually I like to do um, wet on wet technique with leaves and really go crazy with my leaves. This project, we're not doing that because um, already right here where I dropped in that extra puddle of water, my paper is starting to warp. Can you push that up a little bit so my leaves see on the side? Yeah. Can they kind of see where that's starting to bubble a little? Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> with the leaves and then the flowers, same thing. So if I'm doing this like peony round flower, I want to be really thoughtful about how I'm doing this. Now these, I, I kind of outlined the roses, but these other two I did fill in, but I'm not like doing layer and layer and layer. And I know this is gonna be a challenge for some of you and that is okay. It's good for us to challenge how we approach things because we learn faster sometimes by doing things the opposite of how we would usually do them. So instead of like, um, how do I say this? Like messing with something over and over again, we basically just have to put the shape in and leave it alone. And like, that's it. Because if I were to keep working this just over and over and over, 
and then maybe I'm like, I should drop an extra color here, or I should try and do another layer because I'm still not happy with the shape. I'm just gonna keep messing with it. I'm gonna do another layer. My paper's gonna be ruined. So you gotta be really okay with like putting your shapes down and moving on. So that's where um, if you wanna sketch out your shapes before you paint them, that is a good idea. Okay. All right, I think we're ready to start. So you can keep that close to you handy if you need to, because I like to test colors, things like that. All right, I'm gonna use my round six and I'm gonna start off with this uh, curved rose that's similar to what we did in our warm up here. The, yes. I just thought of this. Normally you uh, talk about how the Canson has a more toothy side and a smoother side and the toothy side is Yes. Paper. Does this paper have that? No, this paper does not have... Wait, <laughs> I'm gonna close my Stand eyes. Stand by. <laughs> I'm gonna close my eyes. I feel like they're the same. Okay. I feel like the either side are the same. Great question, Keenan. Dang, I wish we would have addressed yeah, that. I hadn't thought of that till just now. Well, that's okay. I'm sure somebody will ask on the YouTube mm -hmm. comments and we'll, we'll let them know. Um, but I don't think that there is a front or back to this paper. If there is, I haven't noticed a difference. Cool. Okay. So, so I'm going to start with the, the rose looking one up here. This, this pink guy right here. Now the difference between this and how I communicate that it's kind of starting to turn away instead of just totally flat is you'll see that my bottom part of the flower is more worked up than the other side of it. And that's me showing that we're seeing more of one side of it. So it's turning. Okay. So I can sketch this out. Um, I'll start to sketch this out. I'm not, I'm not scared of sketching yeah. and that might be helpful for you guys. Um, so kind of on the left hand side, I never start with flowers directly into the center of my painting because it's super hard to make your composition feel even when you start directly in the middle, for me anyway. So I go directly to the left or to the right and go a little bit up or go a little bit down, okay? So if this is the center of my paper, my flower is gonna be right here. And if this is the center of my flower there, and then I'm gonna do small overlapping sketches. Can they see that on the camera? Yes. And then I'm gonna work up the bottom and not continue over here. And hopefully that will kind of give the illusion that it's turning a little bit. Um, and then I'll do my kind of big open face flower right here. Now it's okay if these petals run into each other And notice that all of my petals are different shaped and this looks kind of wonky, but the great thing about flowers is there is a flower out there that looks like that. Flowers and leaves are wonky. So don't feel like your petals need to be totally perfect. So here's the center of that. And then I'm gonna do my kind of, so if this is my starting point right here for my peony, there's the first petal, second, third, I have one coming up the back. And if you wanna do like another one layered on top, you can. Okay, so there's like my peonies and then another rose. And if your flower bed gets messed up, you know, just blame it on a local toddler. <laughs> They just went traipsing through A local your toddler. Yeah, You're like, those I, I, toddlers. Those darn toddlers. Running around town in my neighborhood. Bunch of hoodlums. Trampling on my flowers. Where are their mothers? Little pudgy fingers. Where are their fathers? Yeah, where are they? <laughs> toddlers. Toddlers. Okay. So let's get to painting. So I'm going to use my round two. I'm going to pick up some pink. And I'm just gonna follow the marks that I made, my center, and then do my overlapping lines. And I'm gonna let my brush strokes get a little bit thicker as I 
make my way to the edge by, by doing like pressing down on my brush a little bit more. Now usually at that this point when we do watercolor on white paper I suggest using water to just kind of blend some of these out. I'm not going to do that with this project because I'm being really mindful of the amount of water that I'm using. Okay. There it is. And if you want to put like a yellow center in there you can. You can just grab some gold and kind of drop that in. Now I'm going to switch to my six and do my open face flower. This one is going to be mostly gold. And then I'm going to grab just a tiny, tiny bit of pink. Just the idiot, itty bitty. And again, it's just following the shapes, filling it in and moving on. It's okay if these petals run into each other and into other flowers. There we go. Now I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna come back and do the center and these like pink edges um, at the end. I'm not gonna do that yet. And I'm gonna go to this little fella down here, my peony. Peony? How do you say it? Peony. Peony. Yes, peony. Peony, peonies. If I'm just saying in a conversation, talk about peonies. 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 It's peonies. It's peonies. <laughs> that sounds like a language. <laughs> it does. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit more pink. And again, I'm just kind of following. I'm being mindful of my brush strokes. Following the shapes that I already have outlined. Leaving the center black for um, a uh, the center of my flower for the stamens that are going to be kind of popping through. And then I'll do my rose down here. This one's going to be a little bit more gold. Do, 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 do. And you can do this with a six or a two. It just depends on how comfortable you feel with making thin lines. If you're not super comfortable with it, you might want to use your two. I feel like I can get a pretty good thin line with my six. And if you want to do that water trick a little bit, you can. So don't feel like you can't use any water. You can just be really mindful of it. So if I wanted to do it just a little bit, I'm just going to do it just a little bit. Okay. Voila. Now we're going to do our big leaves, the three right here. One, two, three. So I, th we have a gorgeous green, but you get an even more gorgeous green, I think anyway, if you mix a little bit of the gold with the green, you'll get like such a good green. So I'll show you both. So here is just the pure green by itself and I'll have this leaf kind of coming out here. Okay, and then mixing a little bit of my gold with my green. Look how good that green is. Oh, wow. Isn't that nice? It's a good, and then I'm gonna leave the middle white, I mean middle uh, black for like a vein. Okay, and then I have one more leaf kind of coming out this way. And um, remember when you're doing um, leaves in a round composition, and by round I mean like, this is round. <laughs> this entire thing, like the bouquet shape is generally round. We do have some things like kind of spouting out but for the most part it's round. We do not want strong horizontal or vertical lines on these edges because that will create a very strong implied line within our composition and we do not want that. It's not bad to do that. It, how do I, like these things that I'm saying, these rules, it's okay to break them if you realize you're breaking them on purpose for a reason. 
So if part of your composition was just like, no, I actually want, I have something else going up on up here. So I want to do a strong vertical implied line to get my viewer to look up at this other part that I'm painting in a painting. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So is what if we did a video of just implied lines? Like, like showing them what it, like, because I can kind of get the idea of what you mean visually, but it would like. Oh, I'll do one right now. All right. Because I'm not scared. This is just Perfect. a piece of paper. Yeah. Learning opportunity. So this leaf, if I were to do it straight up and down. Okay. And then I'm going to do a couple more. Um, as I go throughout the composition, I'm going to do a couple more that are specifically super straight to kind of illustrate what I'm showing you guys. Cool. But please follow the reference photo then if I'm going to do this. Okay? Let's see how this goes. <laughs> They're like, the entire tutorial you were painting us, showing us what not to do. <laughs> There's a lot of other floral tutorials that you can watch yeah, too. Yeah, we've got good ones. So. Okay, so that's step one. I got my big um, florals and leaves in. Now I'm going to move to my medium-sized florals and leaves. So, oh, it's, it's like giving me anxiety that I'm about to do this, but I said that I would do it for a learning opportunity, so I'm going to do it. And maybe this will be good because I can show you how to adjust it if you accidentally do it. So. That will be good. Okay, so I'm going to do this uh, section of leaves over here that are more outlined and that I don't fill in. And I'm going to do straight up and down stem. This hurts my soul. And then <laughs> my leaves kind of coming off. And we're just outlining them and they can like overlap with the other ones. Cause sometimes leaves are funky, you know? They do overlap. They don't like always perfectly stay flat and in their world. Okay, do you see what I'm saying now about the implied lines? As of right now, I like it. <laughs> do you? Yes. <laughs> Keenan's like, wait, this is bad? I don't know. Okay, and maybe that's okay. Maybe you like really, really strong implied lines in your composition. Yeah. What do you like about it? I don't, it's just so satisfying. Really? Yes. It's it looks, the opposite for me. It, okay, I don't, I mean, I'm looking at this camera. It just looks so, it looks clean. Okay, okay. I can kind of see that. I'm gonna put the veins in. Because the reference photo is, it's not messy by any means, but it's... It's chaotic. It, I wouldn't even say chaotic. It's, it's life. Yes. But... It's more natural to what it's... It is more uh, representative of the nature of the flowers in the botanicals. Yes. But I like to look at things that are also representative of life, but in a specific order. <laughs> so if it can be, if it can, I mean, it, yeah, I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Okay. Well, I'm just going to keep on going then. So, and it like, for me, compositionally, seeing these strong implied lines is like messing me up a little bit where I'm just like, how do I, how do I balance this now that I have like literally a line running through the middle of my um, painting? But that's okay, we're gonna keep going, we'll adjust. So, <clears throat> let's see what it looks like if we put a leaf straight out this way. Okay, okay. And like, <laughs> the other thing that I want you guys to pay attention to with these implied lines is they can put weight on one side of the paper more than the other. I can see that. So this is feeling really heavy to me down here. And this does not feel 
um, full or it, it's making this part of the thing like fall away because it's bringing all of the feeling down here. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. So, okay. Okay, I think this is a good place to, to sh if this is kind of what you accidentally did, not really thinking about it, and you're like, okay, well, how do I adjust it from here? I'm gonna stop doing things per, and I'm gonna show you how to adjust from here. So, the biggest thing that we have to address is the fact that all of this weight is down here now, okay? And so, what can I do at the top of my painting over here to make up for this weight to make it feel balanced? Okay, so one thing that I would probably want to do is do something around this long as well. Um, but again, if I make it straight up and down, then that's going to still knock it off balance because then all the weight will be back up here and this will feel empty now. So, Let's put in. Yeah, I really like how that looks right now. <laughs> so funny. Well, and I, I think that's good that you're like, no, I like how that feels. I like what that's making me do to my eyes. Like, that's okay. Like, I'm going to show you how I approach things and what I look for, but it's totally up to you guys and I don't think that there's a right or a wrong like it just depends on the type of balance you want in your painting and maybe you like the idea of your painting being slightly off balance like artists do things like that all the time I just want to show you what the rules are so you know when you're breaking them and you're doing it on purpose that's all it's about so okay so for me I need to dislodge this really strong vertical line so I'm going to do some leaves coming out this way and try and bring the weight back to the top. Okay, that's already starting to feel more balanced to me. And we can do some veins. Now, the other thing to think about when you're when we're talking about balance and weight, um, something to think about is value and color. So, um, some tricks that I use is if something is feeling really off balance, and I need something strong to pull it back. I'll make sure I'll use super vibrant colors or really contrasty colors. Um, that have lots of highlights and lowlights because that draws your eye a little bit more. Whereas if I was just doing light values um, with like a soft wash, it's going to give it a little bit of weight but not feel as heavy as something that is um, super contrasty and filled. So like if I wanted to even bring more weight to the top, I would fill in these leaves and that would put a little extra weight on the top than on the bottom because there's more color there. Does that make sense? Okay, so I put that on the top. It's starting to feel a little bit more um, even. I'm going to put, put stuff around here and try to mess up this strong line. And I totally went off. This is going to be so different from my reference photo. <laughs> but that's okay. It's good to show you guys how to adjust. And hopefully you guys are learning because I've never actually um, did this. Like shown how to like adjust when you accidentally do something you don't want to do or that's exciting. change your mind. So <clears throat> for me, there's this huge space now. How long and straight this goes out, there, this is like super bare now. You know what I mean? Yep. So I need to put something here to make it feel full again. I feel like if I did little leaf stems, it wouldn't do the trick because this is so long and strong. I think I actually need to do another floral here to balance it. So I'm going to, I'm going to do gold because I have two pink right here and I don't want it to feel like there's only pink on this side and only gold on this side. So I'm going to do another gold flower here. These metallic colors are super cool. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Can they, are they showing up really nice on the camera? Yes. 
Okay, and you guys can decide um, what type of flower you want to do. I think I'm probably going to do a rose, actually. So just starting right here, I'll do my center. Okay. Okay, so this gap is starting to feel a little bit better for me. But <laughs> I hope this is not so much information. And if it is, I'm so sorry. But your painting's going to inform you as you go. So because I put that there, now I'm looking at this space over here. And now I'm like, okay, now I feel a lot of weight on the bottom left. The top right is feeling not as balanced. So I need to put something in this top right area to where I feel like it's feeling a little bit more even. So just know that whenever you add a new element to your painting, you need to make sure that there is um, an opposite element to complement it. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like the... A balance. It's like there's balance in everything. So, and sometimes like your last piece is balancing out what it is, like your last element that you add. Okay, so I'm gonna do pink over here. A pinky gold. It, it gets this really gorgeous like peachy um, color when you mix the gold and the pink. And I'm going to do medium sized flowers because I feel like if I did these, these tiny dots, they would be too small compared to the big elements around it. So I'm just gonna do these same things, but a little bit bigger. So um, let's just do like little four or five petaled open face flowers kind of coming out on this side. Okay, so that's starting to feel better. Now I'm noticing over here and over here. So I'm gonna just start putting some leaves in. Um, and you can kind of mess between um, the green and then the green and gold mixture. You can kind of mix it up. So if I'm gonna do like slightly smaller leaves this way Okay, now this to me is still throwing it off balance. Like, do you see the, do you see that when I say that? Does that make sense to you? Off balance? Yeah. Yes. Like, do you see how, for me, like, I feel like if this leaf was slightly curved out, it wouldn't feel as off balance to me. So here's how I picture it in Keenan's brain. Okay. The paper is split into four squares. Uh-huh. Evenly. Okay. And I see it even on the left bottom left corner and the mm. top right corner mm -hmm. but there's still spaces on the right bottom right and top left mm -hmm. yes yes um <clears throat> so if we're trying to mess up this super strong straight line right here and bring a little bit more life down here then what i would possibly suggest doing is trying to mess up this line by a curved leaf kind of coming out this way and actually cutting across this very strong thing and see if that will help my eye. Because what we want is we want our eyes to do this within a composition. So if I can give it somewhere to go instead of straight down, then I'm doing my job of bringing it back up. So after I put that in, then it's my job to put something in over here that will continue that uh, thought or look. Okay, so I'm going to do this in just the green. And I'm going to do kind of some leaves going this way. And I'm going to try and mess up this line here. Okay. Okay, already I'm starting to feel like it's more balanced. Does that almost feel a little bit more balanced to you? On the wrong side. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, if you accidentally put a very strong vertical or horizontal line in your painting, um, 
maybe do another element that's kind of like wanting it to move a little bit more this way. Or see if you can adjust the stem itself. The stem is such a straight line and I don't really have any other straight lines in my painting. So maybe you can be like, uh, what if we actually just like made another leaf coming up this way like that and maybe another leaf coming up this way and then it's not so it kind of works its way a little over there okay but I'm still missing pieces over here which is not the end of the world you just gotta you just gotta keep on going <clears throat> so I'm gonna do another big leaf over here And this is where I can say, I want this to feel heavy, so I'm actually going to fill it in. And maybe I'll put a little extra green because that's pretty gold. Okay, now I have a little bit more weight on this side. Now this side is starting to suffer, right? So then I gotta adjust. I'm gonna put some pink flowers, kind of like how I did, down over here. I'm still using my six. And I'm basically going to try and bring the edge out of my flowers to be a little bit closer to this so this does not protrude so much. Okay. Now I'm still feeling like it's bare over here, over here and over here, but it's starting to feel more balanced to me. Are you seeing that? You can disagree with me. No, I can see it. Okay. Um, so one thing that I can do is I really like these little thingies because they have such a strong direction and um, they, they create movement. They have a stronger sense of movement, so you can use that to your advantage, right? Um, so if I bring it down this way, it will make my eye wanna keep going down here. Um, and then, so you just, have to, you just have to be careful of the direction that they're, they're going because I have something strong coming curved here. If I do one coming curved out here, that's gonna be a really strong sense of direction. If I have another one coming curved out here, that's gonna be a really strong sense of direction. And I'm not saying that one is right or one is wrong. You just gotta be aware of what you're, where you're telling your viewers' eyes to go. So, um, I like the idea of having this come out this way. I do too. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a pink and I'm gonna do the peachy pink, so a little bit gold with my pink. And I'm gonna do kind of a roundish shape that gets a little bit smaller. I'm gonna leave spaces for the veins, or for the, uh, um, what is that? The stem. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So aside from, or maybe it's the same thing, when, when you say composition, does that include pieces of the art that are brighter than other parts of the same painting? What do you mean? Is it value? Mm -hmm. A higher value? Mm -hmm. So for example, the right side leaf, the really pretty green leaf with the black this one. vein, uh -huh. mm -hmm. that one's brighter mm -hmm. than everything else. Mm -hmm. Do you do anything to adjust that elsewhere so that it doesn't draw so much attention? Yes, so when you're thinking about composition, not only are you thinking about the shape, and for me anyway, the shape and the eye direction that these shapes are creating within and making it feel balanced, value and color play into that balance as well. Okay? So um, that's why sometimes when you're doing um, landscapes or just, just paintings in general, I want you to hold your painting far away because not only do you get a better sense of the general shape 
of the composition, but you will notice if some areas are so vibrant and sticking out to the point that they make your composition feel uneven. Mm. You know what I mean? Yep. So I almost want to like make sure that that's accurate, but that's how I view it, is all of those things are related to each other. That's why I asked if it was the same, because it, it would make sense for it to be part of the composition thought process. Okay. Yeah, so um, the, it says the composition is the placement or arrangement of visual elements in a work of art. So, and then they said elements of a composition that includes contrast, pattern, proportion, movement, balance, rhythm, like unity, focus. I don't, I didn't check these sources, but <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> but all of those inform your composition. Okay, so I made this strong thing. This strong thing is going to, so I'm, I'm really creating a really strong line for my viewer. Um, I like the idea of having one come this way, but I think if I were to do that, I need to have some coming the opposite way so it, it's not so obvious that I'm like, look at this swirly floral thing. You know what I mean? So what I like to do is I like to use the different smaller elements to do, you okay? Oh, <laughs> Keenan, calm down. I was just standing here. <laughs> so I like to use these smaller floral elements to go the opposite way sometimes. Um, so it provides that counter, counteract to that very strong shape. So if you notice my smaller elements, usually they're going in opposite directions. This one is going up, this one is going down, this one is curving out, this one is curving out the opposite way. This is going to the left, this one's going to the right. So I try to like play with those directions so it's not they're all going the same way. So for me, I need to put, I want to put something out here going down this way to counteract this strong motion. I wonder if this tutorial is going to be like so long. I don't know if it was supposed to be. It wasn't. But it has turned into <laughs> quite the lesson. Hopefully it's helpful. Hey, you see, you see that picture that I painted? I'm not going to paint that. <laughs> That's essentially what I'm doing. I'm going to paint something totally different. Oh, you're expecting flowers? <laughs> oh, well, <guess> Giraffe. <laughs> okay, so that's going down. Um, I'm going to put another one. I think I need something coming out right here since this is so strong. I'm going to do a gold. Now, <laughs> I don't want to do a gold one coming out like at the same angle but opposite. That's too opposite. You know what I mean? You have to like softly move the eye. You can't just be like, ba-bam, ba-bam. Two opposite directions right next to each other. You know, like really extreme. Um, so sometimes you have to do like, okay, I'm gonna have your eye come out this way. And you guys can use leaves or flowers for these elements that are leading your eye. It's totally up to you, um, whatever you think is best. I usually try to pay attention to color at this point. So I'm very aware that this, all of this edge right here on my flowers are all green and gold right here. There's no pink. And so for me to make me feel like I need to balance this color wise, I need to throw a little bit of pink in there. So then it's not like all just green along the edge. So let's throw some pink. I can do little buds there. I can do like a peach over here. Okay, so now my, my pinks, um, that feels color balance feels a little bit more better on this edge. Now this thing, because it's sticking out, that took care of that for that corner for me because this pink thing's in there. If this wasn't in there, then this would be feeling really green and gold, okay? And I still need something up here. 
And this is where you can decide, do I want my motion to go this way? Or do I want my thing to go this way? So you can play with that. And sometimes you can even use like, um, uh, like elements. Like if you're not sure, you can be like, okay, then I'm gonna grab like a paintbrush and have a line going this way. I'm gonna see how that feels. Okay. And then maybe have one going this way. And I'm covering up the rest of the red because that red is pretty distracting. Do you have a preference, Keenan? I don't know Actually, if I have like, this way or this way. Oh, it's tough. I like, up until you put the brush there, I was picturing it going with the other one, like pointing towards the other so one. So this one? Yeah, or the I like that way now. You like this way? Uh-huh. Okay, let's do it. And I guess the reason for me that I'm not super passionate about is either way, I have to make adjustments to fill this in anyway. So like this, because I feel like I have some strong elements that are going the opposite way too, um, I don't feel like this would like so super throw off anything. You know what I mean? Yes. And then also pay attention to the angles, right? This is a soft curve. I could have made it like, like really strong curve, but that's too much, I feel. That would have been a very strong curve in my composition. So I did that and then I'm gonna bring the stem in. Okay. And then to balance, so like now I have this big space right here that's empty. So sometimes I'll do leaves off of the stem to fill in like long thin leaves. So if I'm like, okay, well then this has a little leaf coming off that. And notice that it's turning to the right instead of all the way to the left because I want to provide a little bit of counterbalance to that strong curve. Okay. Okay, I still feel like I need something here and I need some things here. And this is where I'm starting to put in my smaller elements. So we're on step three. We put in most of our big and our medium. And now we use our smaller elements to shift any balances that we need compositionally and color wise. So I'm going to do just straight gold and I'm gonna have it curve this way. It's just not gonna be as long as this one. I'll outline it first and then I'll see if I decide that I need it to be filled in. So I'm just gonna use my round two and just do some leaf line work. Okay. And I feel like I need to have something going up this way. I'm gonna use just green and do like these small um, eucalyptus looking stems. For those, I just do a thin line, and then I just do curved, working my way down. Sometimes they go across the middle, sometimes they go flat out to the side, like that. Okay, I think I'm either gonna have to fill this in or do something else because this outlined gold is not strong enough to balance it. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Do you? Yes. What animal? From my angle. What animal? I'm really not sure, but I, I, it may just be a face. But because of that uh, purposeful implied line, the leaf on the top, got some like, little antlers coming out of it almost with the, the leaves. That's what it looks like on the camera. This? Uh huh. So that one goes to the right, and then your other stem goes to the left. <laughs> I can see that. So we got some little antlers, and then the really pronounced leaf on the right is its mouth. Those two leaves on the right side. Down, down. This. That's your left, other oh, right. You said left. No, I said right. Did you? Uh huh. Oh, I can see this uh -huh. mouth. That's a mouth. That's a mouth. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of a, 
uh, like a Venus flytrap mouth a little bit. Yeah, totally. Or like, yeah. or like that Mario flower thing. <laughs> Pops out of the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, still some small elements. Now, um, for me, I filled in those leaves. It brought a little bit more weight to that upper left-hand corner, which I feel pretty good about. Um, I still feel like there's a couple things missing, so I'm just going to show you where I, f I feel a little bit um, disconnected or like empty. It's kind of in here still, in <coughs> here, and maybe here. Um, so let's just do some gold coming out this way. And again, you can start with outlining it first, and then you can decide if it's something you feel like you need to fill in. And you can adjust the size of the leaves too if you want a small element, um, just a little hint of something there. And let's get some of this bright pink and do a couple uh, little blooms out there. And I like to do these little buds. Again, they're a great way for me to play with color along the edges, maybe balance some composition. Okay, how's that feeling? That's feeling pretty good. I feel like I need a little something here. So I'm gonna do a little eucalyptus thing, kind of like I did there. Do I want it long? No, I don't want it long. I'm going to do it shorter than these leaves. Okay. And then I feel like I just need maybe some little buds poking out over here. And this is why I like these loose floral things, because it's like, gravitationally, does it make sense to have little buds poking out of like the side of this flower? No, but <laughs> who cares? You know what I mean? It's our painting. Okay, so that feels good. Let's have, now then I like have to adjust. This is feeling pretty empty. Is that also feeling empty to you? Yes, I was gonna point that out if you didn't do something to it. So I'm just gonna do some little flowers kind of coming out this way. Okay, and then I feel like I need, maybe I'll do these same flowers and just make them smaller and go out a little bit more. Like they're kind of fading away or something. Okay, and then I think I need something coming out here. Maybe I'll do a eucalyptus. Okay, that is feeling pretty balanced to me. Do you concur? I concur. Okay, great. Well, it's not too different from this one. No. No, it's not that bad. Okay, now we're gonna do like our details. So now that we feel like for the most part our composition is balanced, our colors are balanced, now we can focus on doing the details of these flowers. So I'm gonna take some pink and I'm just gonna do some pink little lines right where the, um, it's coming out from the center. If you want to do them all the way through your painting, you can, but because the pink and gold are such a, a different color, I didn't want to do them throughout the uh, petal, just kind of on the base, like that. And then we're gonna just use gold for the center, like so. If you want to do little dots, you can. That. We need to have a gold center, like little stamens poking out of the center of my flower. How does the weight feel? I'm trying to think if I need to like color anything in. But because we added so many elements, this straight, super straight leaf that I put in, you can't really see it anymore. Right? Correct. The only thing I can see is that leaf at the very top. 
this one pointing straight up, is that too much for you? I don't think it's too much. I just think I can see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do with that, because now that you've said it, it's all I can see, <laughs> which happens sometimes. So maybe what you can do to adjust that, you see how I did this gold like outline around it? So maybe I can manipulate that to be kind of curvy to adjust the, the strong straight up and down. So let's see if that works. Curve this way. And then maybe I'll just mess with the green a little bit to curve. Does that feel, I feel like that feels a little bit better. Yeah, it, it tied in better with the that stem on the right. And then maybe I need to have little um, blooms or buds right here coming out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we'll do little gold centers on these, some of these flowers. You don't have to do that on all of them. Okay, and I f <laughs> I'm just going crazy with adding little elements. Um, actually, I think this feels good. But if I was doing this for a project, and this is what I do for projects, I, at this point, I would hold it up and step away and then come back and make sure that there's not any adjustments or things that I need to add to make it feel more complete. For the most part, um, you're not really going to need to do that because um, it's not gonna make a huge difference. We have so many things going on here. Um, but if you do step away from it and come back and there is something glaring, it will be way more obvious. So that's why I say, Take a step back after a bit and make sure that there's nothing so obvious that you just can't see because you're so in it. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Okay, well, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed painting that with us. We did kind of go off script a little bit, but I just wanted to show you my thinking process and my problem solving process when it comes to these loose florals. And hopefully you can take those tips and those tools and apply them to your own paintings and compositions and will just make you feel a little bit more um, successful um, with these types of projects because I know that they can get really frustrating. Loose florals are hard, composition is hard. Like all of these things, we talked about keeping in mind so many things that can be really overwhelming. So. Do your best, know that it gets better with time and practice, so don't give up on yourself. Um, and I can't wait to see what you come up with. So tag us on Instagram at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. If you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. And if you want to see how other people are approaching it, or maybe you're, you want to like ask someone like, this feels off to me, but I can't figure it out. We have a wonderful community called uh, Let's Make Art Watercolor on Facebook. It's huge. Um, it's like over 40,000 people now. Um, but it's a really great place to see how other people are approaching it or if you need feedback or um, there's lots of different levels in there. There are people who are really professional. There are people who are just starting out. Um, and because of that, it can be a really strong source for you guys to learn or to teach someone else. So that's called uh, Let's Make Art Watercolor on Facebook. And that is all I have to say. Gosh, how long did this turn into? I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty long. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you are so mad I didn't do exactly what this <laughs> painting is, I'm really sorry. And I will not do that again then if that makes you mad. But I hope you learned something. So that's it. You can blame Keenan actually. Yeah, blame <laughs> I'll take the blame all day. All right, that's it. Bye, you guys.